This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Gee, now what could possibly go wrong now? I, I just don't know. The next morning. I wake up as if nothing happened and prepare breakfast for myself and Yumiko. I'm off from work today, so there's no real need to get up at the crack of dawn, but I decided it would best be best to create an opportunity for the two of us to talk as quickly as possible. This is reminding me of Clannad After Story a little bit. It's like you and one girl, not really any other character, just kind of in the apartment together. It's good, though. I like it. On the whole. Hey. So, you kissed me last night. No doubt thanks to her emotionally draining night, Yumiko seems a little languid this morning. She totters off drowsily toward the washroom and proceeds to splash water on her face for a while. Seems perfectly at ease. No hint of tension in the air. In other words, she's convinced herself I'm unaware of the incident last night. Awfully carefree, aren't we? Let's eat. Just as always, Yumiko chews the salt-grilled salmon with small, quiet movements of her mouth. Dang, salmon? Nice. Judging from her expression, she's completely off guard. Not that she has any reason to expect what's coming. <laughs> so you kissed me last night! <laughs> Should I really say it? Oh, is this where we get good ending or bad ending? That would actually be a tough choice to make. I'm still more than a little hesitant. When a man and a woman live together with a clearly defined relationship, it's not surprising that tensions of this nature might arise. It'd be short-sighted to pretend last night never happened. I might want to clear the air, and Yumiko's probably feeling some subtle awkwardness and guilt herself. That said, the last thing I would need is for this to turn into some overblown drama. Too late. You're in a visual novel. Alright, I think this calls for a very natural, casual approach. I choose my words carefully, aiming to keep this a light breakfast table chat. Hey, Yumiko. As Yumiko casually sips her miso soup, I ask the question in the most nonchalant tone of voice I can muster. You kissed the- He actually said it that way?! I was just joking that he would be that blunt! <laughs> Ah! I was- that was just a joke! I thought that even Yuji wouldn't be that stupid to just say it like that, but wow, he really did it. I- wow, I- I need a water refill. Sorry, I was running low on water, and reading all this dialogue does make me thirsty, so... Mm. Oh, that's a good, nice sip. Mmm, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't believe he actually said this. So, you kissed me in my sleep last night, didn't you? <laughs> that would have been the perfect time for the lightning strike effect. Oh, come on! She promptly chokes on her soup and begins coughing violently. <coughs> and Yumiko dies. <coughs> I was thinking this might go smoother if I brought it up casually during a meal, but... Uh, it seems that didn't work out so well. You should have brought it up that night! <coughs> Yumiko flat-out denies the truth in a desperate attempt to retroactively undo her folly. This isn't good. She seems to be getting somewhat emotional. SOMEWHAT?! <laughs> Bruh! <laughs> but since I've broached the subject, I can't allow her to squirm out of the discussion. Stealing my nerves, I push bluntly forward. Sorry, but I was awake the whole time. See, this, this wouldn't- you, you wouldn't be able to do this if you had confronted her right at that moment. I mean, she already it can't really deny it, but, like, yeah, yeah this is... <laughs> you know, I can't even be that mad at Yuji, because I do stupid stuff like this, too, so whatever. A little after 11 last night, wasn't it? Lasted about 10 or 15 minutes after you came back from the bathroom. <laughs> Yumiko quietly falters under my skeptical gaze. How about you just say, I'm not mad, I liked it. <laughs> 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 
but I'm expecting the box cutter to be coming out soon. And I, in a deeply mortified voice, she finally owns up to her misdeed. Oh no, are you actually going with the I was trying to give you mouth to mouth to resuscitate you? Bruh. Completely flustered, she begins babbling incoherently. I'm tempted to ask her if, if her conception of CPR is limited to repeatedly kissing someone, but this probably isn't the time to be mocking the girl. I stare at Yumiko straight in the eyes, then gravely lower my head in apology. My apologies for not realizing sooner. <laughs> Yumiko. It's not an excuse, but I genuinely had no idea you were so sexually frustrated. Bruh! And Grisea's back. Oh my gosh, this it's almost like Yuji's trying to play a game of what's the dumbest thing I could say in any situation. Good thing I got a water refill. We're gonna be sipping a lot of water. I bought into the stereotypes about women having lower libidos. Convinced myself Amine was just an exception to the rule. Well, Amine definitely veers a little far too much in the opposite direction. Waving her arms about to signal a halt, Yumiko interrupts in, a, in an agitated tone of voice. Bro, is she breaking out the box cutter? Well, from an objective point of view, I think it's the most plausible explanation. Beep boop. When someone hasn't expressed any clear feelings for you suddenly makes that aggressive of a move, I'm not sure whatever conclusion there is to draw. But as I'm reviewing my reasoning, Yumiko's expression grows incre increasingly sour. With a heavy sigh, she moves her shoulders up and down in an exaggerated shrug. In the next moment, Yumiko's body begins to tremble with something that seems suspiciously akin to rage. Hey, follow-up question. Was I just incredibly rude to you by any chance? Yes! <laughs> yes! You were! <laughs> you said it's so many rude fiends, you did so many stupid fiends. It's all... Uh, gosh. God bless America. Yuji, you... You are simultaneously very introspective and incredibly not. I just... Mmm. Mmm. Oh, she lost the box cutter! I guess that makes sense that the guys would take it off of her when they kidnapped her. Oh, we gotta buy her a new one. Wait, what am I saying? Come to think of it, we left the box cutter of hers behind when we ran away. Since Yumiko remembered that thing, it's clear that she's abnormally furious. And it's equally obvious where that anger is coming from. My cluelessness drove her straight into a corner. I step towards Yumiko and wrap my arms around her without a word. Sorry. My bad. Seriously. How is it you're bad, Yuji? No, no. You can say the words, I'm sorry, but why are you sorry? What did you do wrong? As I embrace her and apologize, she finally begins to settle down a little. I didn't bring this up because I wanted to mock you for having a healthy interest in the opposite sex, Yumiko. What? What? Oh, wait. Oh, I read that! <laughs> I read that sentence completely wrong! I thought he was... <laughs> See, this is amazing how you can... You have a set of words in text form, but depending on your inflection and how you read it, it completely changes the meaning. So what I just said was incredibly rude. <laughs> What he's actually saying... Let me try that again with the actual inflection he means. I didn't bring this up because I wanted to mock you for having a healthy and interest in the opposite sex, Yumiko. See? See? Same words. Completely different meaning, depending on how you how you say it. That was that one was on me, but I just assumed that Yuji was being a crud butt again. See? If I hadn't corrected that, then Yumiko's reaction would not have made sense. I wasn't sure if you had feelings for me, so I honestly didn't know what to do. Until now. Yeah. I finally got my answer. 
Yumiko's been hiding romantic feelings for me. I just wasn't observant enough to see them. My well-intentioned watch-and-wait policy ended up driving her to this humiliating moment. I've disgraced myself as a man. Since I finally understand, there's no reason for me to keep hesitating. Pulling slightly away from Yumiko's body, I stare straight down into her face. Yumiko, I love you. I want to make you happy. I also want to sleep with- Wow! You just, <laughs> you just threw that out immediately! Yumiko, I have feelings for you. I love you. Let's have sex. <laughs> Sound like a plan? Uh, maybe you change, uh, <clears throat> maybe you add a couple steps in there before that last thing you mentioned, just, uh, just, hey, just a wild idea, which maybe might help your relationship out in the long run. Just a wild idea, I know. Oh, uh, yes, old judgmental Artie is back. Yeah, I pride myself in that. Yumiko closes her eyes and lets her shoulders slump limply downward. She heaves a long, long sigh, reminiscent of a balloon slowly deflating. Smack! Ow! And proceeds to slap me lightly on the cheek. She's not crying or scowling, but there's a distinctly disgruntled expression on her face. Well, that confession was a little... weird. Because he's a psychopath. Or a sociopath. I still don't know which one. But he's one of those two. My apologies. <laughs> Didn't hear a no. Unfortunately, you're right. Yeah, yeah, Yuji, you, you were the coward in that situation. My sincerest apologies. I love how Yuji's like, Yumiko, you can't just say I'm sorry all the time when he's doing it more than she is. Like, <laughs> hypocrite. <laughs> At last, a mildly exasperated smile spreads across Yumiko's face. Well, that's, that's a cute image. <laughs> yeah, oh, you poor thing. And she reaches out once more, this time to offer me her hand. I take it and gently pull her body forward to lean against mine. Mm-hmm. Well, well, just in case they pull a Sachi root, I have no problem with uh, changing the image if necessary. So I'll just pull that up just in case things get a little ranché. And uh, just a friendly reminder to everyone, this game is rated M. So if you are not 17 years or older, you probably shouldn't be watching this. Right. You see, even even terrible protagonist Yuji agrees you shouldn't be watching this if you uh, are not that old. <laughs> I feel the weight once more. Compared to when she's standing normally, holding Yumiko's slender body in my arms like this makes her seem extremely small. I'm no expert in romance, but generally it don't go, hey, I like you, to, hey, let's have sex instantly. Like, you're moving extraordinarily fast right there, bro. But inside that body, she's carrying all the loneliness of her past and uncertainty of her present. The more I think about it, the more absurdly heavy she feels. I'm ready for this. I wouldn't have been living with her in the first place if I wasn't. Still, I'm crossing a very serious line here. Uh-huh! 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 <laughs> You, yes, you are, but here's the thing. You acknowledge it, but you still don't care. <laughs> That's the real problem. All the more so, given her situation. Okay, then. Relax and leave everything to me. Uh-huh. Sure. Yumiko answers my words with a small nod. Her voice conveys simple, absolute trust. That, too, adds to the weight on my shoulders. Okay, cool. Yay! <laughs> Censored version just skipped the whole sex scene. Yay! Hooray for censorship! Actually, I normally don't applaud censorship. I'm generally against it, but in situations... Uh? But in situations like this, yay! I don't want to watch sex scenes between characters! I'm not saying the version with sex scenes should be removed entirely. I'm just saying I am grateful that I, there's an option that I can play where I don't have to sit through that. Because I really don't think that would add anything. And it would be uncomfortable and gross. It's been a few hours since then. 
Having dressed herself and brushed her hair, Yumiko is currently wandering restlessly around the room, groaning at no one in particular. The girl's usual composure seems to have deserted her entirely. Look, can you try to calm down already? This isn't like you, Yumiko. Oh look, things are awkward between us. It's almost like that could have been avoided if you didn't do the deed. Having dug her own grave and then buried herself in it, Yumiko laments loudly. It's a pretty charming spectacle, but at this rate I don't know if she'll ever get a hold of herself. Alright, maybe this will help you settle down a little. Hmm, can I use that CG as a thumbnail? I again, this game is not friend family friendly. But the thumbnails for this game do have to be family friendly. Because my channel on the whole is family friendly unless I specify otherwise. But even if you don't watch the videos, you still see the thumbnails. It's also why I don't really like putting spoilers in my thumbnails. But that does sometimes happen. My apologies. Pulling Yumiko into my arms, I brush her hair back and press my lips against hers. Oh, okay. Sweet. When I release my hold on her face, the girl blinks up at me for a moment and then abruptly grows bashful. <laughs> Blushing from ear to ear, Yumiko tries to hide her face behind one Submit. hand. Submit! Normally, I like that sound alert, but um, in this context, that was... <laughs> In, that, in in the context of what's happening on screen, that was that was that was wrong. How dare you? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Legendary anime JP fan two has just entered. Welcome. Good scene. Thumbs up. Yeah. Clearly not uncomfortable in any way. <laughs> not at all. I'm not exactly the world's foremost connoisseur of cuteness, but this transformation is just too extreme. The sugar rush leaves me a little dizzy. We probably shouldn't have, but we did. Yumiko mumbles the words to herself as if she still isn't quite convinced they're true. Technically, it didn't happen in this version of the game. Because it didn't show us, we can imagine anything happened. We, they actually just watched uh, old episodes of Dragon Tales together, guys. That's what they did. That's that's the big step in any relationship. It's when you sit down with your significant other. You love them very much. You both... Suck it up, you get on the couch, and you watch some Dragon Tales. That's how you know. <laughs> well, I know, right? Pretty unbelievable considering where we started out. <laughs> At first, our communication was limited to slaps to the face and slashes with a blade, and before you know it, we've ended up here. I mean, I'm playing Grisset on the PC, but I'm playing the Steam version, which did censor it, because Steam has... Um, yeah, Steam, Steam version is censored, and thank goodness for that. Before you know it, we, we ended up here, watching Dragon Tales together. I guess we could just... You could just shrug your shoulders and call it fate. Fate and chance and coincidence did play a large part. Yeah! You super lucked out at getting the guy with the world's fastest car just arriving just in time for you to use it. And even more so that he's willing to let you help you out. Even so, I can't help but feel that this all happened for a reason. It's for the reason of a good story. I mean, a story with great parts, but also bad parts. Hey, Yumiko. I hug Yumiko again, much more tightly than before, and stroke one hand slowly down her long hair. Let me say it again. I'm going to keep you safe, no matter what. That's a promise. I know some people prefer the non-censored version. I... And again, like I said uh, earlier, I generally am against censorship, but... In the cases of removing unnecessary sex scenes, I'm, I'm kind of all... I'm all aboard that train. Just as an additional option to have, you know. By the way, I'm a prude. <laughs> I'll be where you are, Yumiko. I won't leave you alone. Sakaki Yumiko was always on her own. Always isolated. Gaining something new after all that time alone was bewildering. When the fog cleared and she realized what she wanted, it almost frightened her. She didn't know what to do. And that's why I need to make this crystal clear. I'm right here. Not just to protect you, but to be with you. It very much depends on the kind of censorship. 
I would say. You, you need to be careful with that. Well, especially... Okay, again. This is a visual novel that's definitely oriented towards adults, so the censorship is not as big of a deal. Uh, for children's programming, there's some stuff you can't allow. That's, that's just the way it'd it be. Have anything to say to that? <laughs> well, Yumiko, do you understand why Dragon Tales doesn't have raunchy stuff in it? A slightly apologetic expression flits across Yumiko's face. But as she looks up at me, it fades into a small smile. That's what I was hoping for. There's no need to ap for apologies anymore. The only thing Yumiko and I need to give each other now is gratitude. And Dragon Tales. Alright then, now that we have that settled, let's fix that kazumi kun of yours immediately. You heard me. It'd be pretty damn weird to keep calling me by my last name at this point, don't you think? And how long is that going to take? Like I said, maybe she just met a really jerky Yuji in her past. Yumiko looks at me up looks up at me with a hint of reproach in her eyes, but after a moment she breathes in deeply as if to steal herself. Okay then. Let's hear it. Once again, the girl takes a deep breath. This time she begins mumbling softly to herself like a nervous middle school student preparing to recite Pi from memory. 3.14159265358975323846903095. Then, in a barely inaudible murmur, The instant the word squeaks out of Yumiko's mouth, her face appears to burst into flame. Why is this? this why are they making such a big deal about this? Again, maybe the culture in Japan is different, but first name basis is kind of the default here in the states. This contrast is really something. I think I'm embarrassed by proxy. Have I ever watched School Rumble anime? I do not watch anime. Like. I've, I've, my sister likes anime. I've seen some parts of anime that she watches. I can't get into it. <laughs> I actually, there's, there's a video I want to make on why I, <laughs> why I don't watch anime. I actually might upload that fairly soon. It will be easy to make. <laughs> I know people, I know there's a lot of different types of anime out there. I, and I know that people have said, like, I bet you like this anime. And, you know, maybe I would. But the anime that I have seen up to this point can't can't really can't really get into it. In Japan it's a really big deal to co uh, to be close enough to call each other by given names. Okay, yeah, so it is, it is just a cultural difference then. Okay. I I figured it must have been and it wasn't just Yumiko being weird. In any case, all my points of concern regarding our relationship have now been decisively resolved. I guess it's just interesting cuz all of the other characters in the game were like on a first name basis with Ah, uh, yes, yeah, Winnie the Pooh, my favorite anime. It, that's a great one. We're still fugitives of an uncertain future, but somehow I think I've gained a little peace of mind. What's wrong? All of a sudden, Yumiko seems to remember something. Her expression grows oddly serious. That's right. Wait, wait, is there something else? Before I can even finish the sentence, Yumiko's thin fingers dig into my arm in a vicious pinch. Ow! <laughs> see? See, Yuji, this is why you don't be stupid. This is why you should have just confronted her the night before. Now you gotta explain this and be like, oh, I was just faking it because I didn't want to embarrass you. It's like, yeah, that worked out real well, bruh. Say what? <laughs> Yumiko's unexpected night raid helped us understand each other's feelings. It was a truly fortunate event, in that respect. But from that day on, I found myself sitting on my heels in penance every afternoon, enduring interrogations into my previous romantic career. It's almost like you shouldn't have done that stupid thing. But he did. <laughs> Mm, boy. Uh-huh. How much 
much money is this bro- dude bro spending to, to find his daughter? I know he's like CEO of like a huge corporation, so he's got like cash to literally burn. But like, <laughs> I have to imagine that part of his anger is just like, oh, she's not doing what I want her to, and part of it's like, I'm spending so much money to try to get her to do what I want her to do. <laughs> I also definitely would not want to be the guy who has to deliver bad news to Michiaki. Wow! Wow. Oh my gosh, his open eye sprite never fails to make me giggle. もう半年か。聞くまでもないが、そちらの調査で何か進展はあったのかね。いい。申し訳ありません。手がかりは何も。Bro, we we moved to France. 自分たちの飼い犬にも関わらず情けないことだ。こうもあっさりと逃げられては。うーん。あなた方が手を引いているのかと疑いたくもなる。社長、それについてはもう信用できる内部調査の結果、アルデラさんへの疑いはなくなったそうだからな。他に何かあるかね。すでに風見裕二、由美子さんの両名とも所持してい
Then again, I guess I'm something of a pseudo-son to JB, and there's nothing inherently strange about her worrying about me. It's just more than a little comical under the circumstances. Of course, it's also a necessary part of our carefully choreographed give-and-take of information, but still. That reminds me, I've got something to report, JB. I bought another cactus for my room over there, but a worm got at it right away. Got a little worried there for a while. Seems like they're actually capable of coexisting, though. Wow, really, bro? Something wrong? Yeah. I borrowed JB's metaphor to inform her of recent developments. Not really the sort of thing I need to go out of my way to report, but there's no reason to hide it either. Even now, the cactus in question is no doubt waiting eagerly for the return of its worm. Yeah, what? That's some way to talk about the poor plant. Oh my gosh, I forgot I'm on the run! It just slipped my mind. I'm aware, thanks. The two of us have connected in the midst of a strange and unstable situation. It's going to be very difficult to maintain this peaceful balance for much longer. But for the moment, for Yumiko's sake and mine, I don't want her to be too conscious of that. Change is constant and ever-present. Time moves forward, whether we like it or not. We bump into other people, unpredictable external factors that knock us off course. Our thoughts, our environment, our place in the world, even our ideology. Everything shifts. And even in a world that's defined by change, human relationships are about as astonishingly volatile as it gets. We go from life to death, family to strangers, strangers to family, we meet and part, make allies and enemies, crown winners and mark losers. Some gain independence while others sink into servitude. Some submit, some rebel. Goodwill can change the hit to hatred in the blink of an eye, and hatred to goodwill. Sometimes people fight their best friends to the death in the struggle for power. Sometimes people sell their family for trivial sums of money. Sometimes the subordinate who'd been treated like a dog launches a coup d'etat. Sometimes the dictator finds himself groveling like a worm before his old throne. I've seen it all. In the scope of things, the case of Kazumi Yuji and Sakaki Yumiko isn't anything out of the ordinary, but the last few months have certainly been full of changes. We started off as strangers, then mortal enemies. <laughs> mortal enemies? Wary doormates, the daughter of a client and the representative of a certain company, a guard and his principal, co-conspirators and fugitives. And now, a man and a woman. It was a pretty tangled road that brought us here. And for where it'll lead, as for where it'll lead next, well, who the hell knows? Certainly not the two people traveling it together. 